Jessica Tomlinson is the VP of Culinary at Ford's Garage. If you're unfamiliar with the brand, it's a 1920s automobile-themed restaurant full of recipes and decor as innovative, if not more so, than the same Ford automobile company that gave the full-service restaurant concept a license. Jessica has a background in baking, pastry, farm-to-table, and fine dining and is currently responsible for creating the menus at Ford Garage's 20-plus locations and is also the recent winner of the JTM Beer Cheese Throwdown. But Jessica just doesn't throw down in the kitchen. She's a collegiate athlete with a mean golf game and a national public speaker. Now it's time to get into the episode. All right, so we are here at Ford's Garage in Wesley Chapel, and I have Jessica Tomlinson. Jessica, how you doing? Doing great. How are you? Doing amazing. I had a good weekend. I did absolutely nothing this weekend, which is what I needed to do. I'm jealous. <laughs> I wish I did, but I have a four-year-old. Oh, <laughs> well, I do have three kids. Okay. I have a, a 12-year-old, I have a, oh my gosh, a nine-year-old, and then a seven-year-old. Okay, so you're pretty tired then all the time as well. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> so do you have a boy, a girl? I have a daughter, and her birthday's on Wednesday. Oh, She'll be five. nice. Well, I happy know. early birthday. Yes, thank you. You, you guys have anything special for the birthday? Uh, a party this weekend. Okay. Unicorn. Oh, unicorn theme. Got yes. it. Yeah, my, my daughter went through a, a unicorn theme also, or phase as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it should be fun though. Yeah, it should good. be good. Yeah. Um. So, all right. So, I like to introduce my guest with something called street cred. So, it's your opportunity to kind of tell me who you are, what you're all about, and uh, establish yourself as the leader that you are. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, so let's okay. go. Hit me well, with some street cred. Yeah. Um. I've been with Ford's Garage for two and a half years. I grew up in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, I played four years of varsity golf in high school, and then I played a little bit in college, and then um, I just decided to be a chef. Okay, so I was actually in Fort Wayne, Indiana two weeks ago. <laughs> okay, that's very <laughs> random. <laughs> it was. Go? It went great. I did two podcasts while I was there, okay. and then I drove all the way to Wisconsin okay. from Fort Wayne. Yeah, all right. yeah it, it, you know, I, it, it's a great place to raise a family. Yeah. Um, it's absolutely beautiful in the summers, but the cold... It's not for me. Yeah, it's cold. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's very cold. It's, it's very Arctic. cold, very gray. Um, so, yeah, so then uh, I went to the CIA in Hyde Park, New York. Went there for uh, two years to do my associate's degree. And then from there, moved to Chicago and kind of just uh, bopped around, wanted to get experience in a lot of different types of cuisines and cooking. So I started off in fine dining, went to farm to table when that was super hot. And then got some baking experience. So I switched the uh, the 11 to midnight shift for the 5 a.m. to 2 p.m. shift. So it was quite the shift in, in mindset and change. But it was um, it was really, really great. I, I love the process of baking. I don't necessarily have the patience for decorating. But I really like the start to finish of, of baking and the, the science behind it. You know, I hear baking is scientific. Yes. And a lot of people that may excel, like, cooking may not be able to bake. So what, what, what do you prefer, baking or preparing like your typical dinner? <laughs> I, I do prefer the culinary savory route, uh, but I think baking is not forgiving. So it's very detailed oriented. There's a reason why you need to really measure every ingredient out because they all play a purpose. And if you forget something, you're not going to know until you take it out of the oven and you forgot that leavener in the cake, which I've done many, many <laughs> times. and It's frustrating. So I think cooking, it, you can make adjustments along the way to salty, at sweet, to bitter, at something sour. So there's a lot of different ways you can balance out a dish along the way. You can't necessarily take the cake out and, and make adjustments mid midway. So what was it that made you want to get that made you want to become a chef? Yeah, that's a great question. Um my parents, I have two older brothers, so my parents were great about exposing us to all different types of foods and cuisines. My dad's Italian, my mom's Hispanic, so both cultures are really big in food and family. Um, so I'd say probably around when I was in high school, I started to take a couple of cooking classes. And what really drew me was when the chef started making risotto. I think taking something humble as rice, but turning it into this lavish dish that you can add lobster, or caviar, and, and, and make it really, really uh, unique and special, it's, my mind was pretty blown. So I have to ask you, what's your favorite cuisine? Is it Latin or Italian? Um, you know, I, I um, it depends on my mood, but I really enjoy, I would say, yes, Latin, Latin, Spanish cuisine, and then Italian. 
but I really love Indian too. So just just different types of cuisines that have a ton of spices and layers of flavor really draw me to that. I actually just got into Indian food. One of my friends, um, I work out with her at F45. Okay. She took me to a restaurant that's down, Bruce B. Down, so like, you know, 15 minutes from here. And it was my first time going to an Indian restaurant. And then like it blew my mind. Yes. It absolutely blew my mind. And then I went to one of my good friend's weddings in Minneapolis. And it was like a traditional Indian wedding. Oh, wow. And oh, my goodness, the food there was next so level. Good, so right? I'm a huge fan of Indian food now. Yeah, I agree. I think, that they're, like I said, that their spices are so complex. and But really, it's, there's so many layers to it that mm-hmm. is, it's addicting. Yeah, it's and, sophisticated. Yeah, it's sophisticated. And uh, I think they do probably the best with vegetarian dishes as well. Mm-hmm. Like the chickpeas, so good. And all the type, different types of breads and rice. I'm a big rice fan. Yeah, I love rice. And it's just, yes, Indian cuisine is delicious. Yeah, I'm not big on um, vegetarian cuisine, right. but they make it taste good because it's just so sophisticated, the, the, they, the flavors. They do. Agreed. Agree. They make it uh, sophisticated but approachable. And, like, just I think the key is, like, craveable. You know, you're wanting that. Yeah. So be- before we move on, I have to ask you, because um, it's been on my mind and I get distracted easily, <laughs> so you played golf. I did. Yes. That's awesome. Yes. I, I, yeah, I, I played golf all throughout high school and, um, and a little bit in college. You know, it's a funny story. Uh, when I was younger, I, I was more into fast-paced sports, basketball, softball, soccer. Um, and then both of my brothers, they're pretty tall, 1'6", 1'6", 2". I'm like, great. You know, I'm going to be like at least 5'10". I'm going to be this great basketball player. Yeah. And it was probably when I was in middle school. Um the doctor, you know, said, yeah, yeah, you're, you're probably going to be around five, 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 six. I remember going back in the car. I was crushed. My mom's like, what's wrong? The doctor's wrong. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm going to have to reevaluate my game plan. I can't, I'm not fast, so <laughs> I can't do basketball anymore. So um, I, I picked up golf pretty quickly. I didn't like it because it's long. It's kind of boring. You have to walk and carry your bag. It's hot. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a really hard sport, but, uh, you know, once I, I shifted gears and put my attention and actually tried, I, I picked it up pretty quickly and it's opened up a lot of doors for me. Golf is the sport that I love to hate because <laughs> yes. I am horrible at it. Well, not horrible, but I'm self-taught. So I picked up a ton of bad habits. Like I can go out there and play, but like nowhere near to like your level. But uh, I think that's the great thing about golf though too, because the, your scorecard doesn't tell you how you got to that hole so you you use a scorecard i just go by how many balls i lose <laughs> you know I, I have played maybe three rounds this year so i prefer not to anymore yeah. <laughs> but um honestly it, it's such a fun sport you get outside you get some fresh air it is a social sport so you can have a conversation with people um and it, it's very mental game yeah I, but i think that has helped me uh with certain aspects of my life it teaches me patience yeah it teaches you patience um kind of have a calm demeanor you could be like freaking out inside but kind of keeping the calm exterior yeah kind of keeping your emotions in check as best as you can do you have a favorite uh, course you've played um that's a great question too uh maybe not necessarily a favorite but maybe a preferred style so i think the difference between playing the midwest and playing in florida is the midwest it's pretty wide open Mm. But here in Florida, they are super narrow fairways, yeah. so it is not forgiving whatsoever, especially <laughs> if you have a slice going on with your driver. So a lot of times I don't even use my driver. Yep, I just keep it in the bag. Um, but I, I, I do play at East Lake Woodlands a lot with my parents. They belong okay. there. so that's And that's a beautiful course. There's two courses. One's a little bit more challenging than the other. And again, very narrow, very tight, but really, really pretty course. I think my favorite course I played was in Phoenix, actually. Uh Squaw Peak, I okay. believe. And I like it because you're literally teeing off on a mountain. Oh, wow. And the fairways are like hundreds of yards below you and super lush, incredibly green, except for the mountains around you. So it's really cool how it's like there's this little green patch of, you know, of, of golf course yes. and all around it is just rocks and barren, barren lane. It's really neat. So that's how a couple of courses are in Brooksville. Have you ever played really? there? Which is extremely surprising. Yes. It doesn't even feel like you're in Florida. One, one tee box you could be hitting down, the next you could be hitting up. Wow. Yeah, it's very different, very, very unique and fun. We should go play one day. Let's do it. <laughs> we should. Um, all right, so where did we first meet? Because we we crossed paths in uh, Denver last year, 
think so, yeah. But we didn't have a conversation. I don't, I don't think I spoke to you. No. You, weren't you presenting or doing something? Yeah, I was a part of the um, the Texas Hero Pete uh, Cookoff Challenge. Oh, that's Endeavor. right. Yeah, that's, that's a great what it conference. Yeah, yep. and that was a create conference done by Nation's Restaurant News, right? Yes, what a great event. That was a really neat event. It was. It was my first time being at that event, and I was really thrilled to um, have been asked to participate in the cooking contest. And what was really special was, um, you know, the winner who got to present a check to No Kid Hungry, who I'm a huge advocate of. So all around, it was special. And last year, it happened to follow my daughter's birthday. So it kind of all just lined up. Yeah. You want to talk about what the competition was? Yeah. So it was uh, four judges were asked to um, come and compete. And, you know, really, really friendly because it's for, good, for the cause of No Kid Hungry and sponsored by Texas Pete. And it was a mystery basket style competition. So we knew there's going to be at least one Texas Pete ingredient inside the basket and then three other ones that we had no idea of. So you just kind of go in and then boom, it's you, you kind of have to just think on the fly what you want to create. Yeah, that was that was a neat experience. And then I saw you at another competition yes. and I believe this one you won, right? I did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I, um, this was at NRA. So mm -hmm. I was uh, asked by JTM to be a part of their beer cheese contest and jtm has been a huge partner for us and as we grow you know they've been extremely supportive um so that was that was a really really fun contest so it was um to use their beer cheese in any application you want to yeah so i actually had a chance to uh be a judge yes and the concoction that you came up with <laughs> that's grilled cheese sandwich yes was amazing. Yeah, so um, just a little bit about that. Um, I'm a huge fan of these birria-style tacos that's been on trend for the last 12 to 16 months. And again, talking about a dish that's flavorful and layers of flavor, that that one nails it. It is so good. It's taking, you're starting with chuck, you're seasoning it, searing it, braising it in this chili, slightly spicy broth. You remove that meat, shred it. And then you kind of just, you know, the traditional route is just to make tacos from there. Um, so I wanted to take that idea, feel, flavor profile, and blend it with a beer cheese. And to me, one of my favorite applications of eating cheese is a grilled cheese. It's nostalgic. It's comforting. Um, it's a, just a great way to showcase beer, uh, beer cheese in a different way. So I kind of married them both. I probably made about a dozen different versions and I was making it at home, so my husband was loving it. He was getting into it. He's like, no, I think it needs this, that. Um, and then we landed on the final version, and I think we just both crushed it in probably less than five minutes. We're like, yep, this, this is That's it. That's a winner. Yep. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I was really, really proud of that dish. I think it came out great. It did come out great. And I'm someone that doesn't like to get their hands dirty. I hate getting my hands dirty. Like, I will eat ribs or hot wings with a knife and fork sometimes, right? <laughs> Yeah. And your grilled cheese sandwich, it was a little bit messy, but I feel like that was part of the experience. Like it it was so good, I didn't mind like just diving right in and getting my hands all messy. I completely agree. I, I don't like to get too messy either, but I think sometimes with some foods you do, and some cultures, they don't use utensils. Yeah. So, you know, you, you're using the bread or whatever vehicle as your utensils, and that's kind of part of the experience. Yeah. And, and definitely so with this dish. You know, it's served with that birria broth and more beer cheese, so it's really about dipping and just kind of getting – kind of getting in there and not be afraid with it. Yeah, I definitely wasn't afraid. It gave, <laughs> your grilled cheese sandwich was so good, it gave me confidence. Yes, <laughs> that? That, I love that. I... So are you a, uh, you seem fairly competitive. Are you competitive? I'm extremely competitive. Okay, so, yes. and you also apparently like to to be in competitions at trade shows. Yes. So I'm going to put you on the spot right now. Okay. So next year at ANC, which is the School Nutrition Association's annual conference, okay. we normally have a party. So sometimes at the party, we'll do a live filming of our talk show. Uh, last year, we had like yard games, like giant beer pong and all sorts of nice. stuff and like silent disco <laughs> and country line Fun. dancing and all that. Yeah, yeah good stuff. Well, next year, we're actually going to do a, well, the plan is, so don't hold me to it, but this is the plan. Okay. We're going to do a ce MTV celebrity basketball game. Oh, my God. So you you told me you used to hoop back in the day, <sighs> and I'm looking for players, looking for chefs, so if you're interested. Well, I have a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity to, to pivot to, like, golf? Oh, man. Like, some sort of golf challenge, you know, like a like a. I don't know if people are going to watch golf the same way they'd watch basketball. It could be like the ultimate putt-putt, you know what I mean? Possibly. Possibly. Okay. We'll see. Um, 
okay, well, you said next year, so plenty of time for me to practice. We can both practice, and it goes towards okay. a good cause. Where it's going to be benefiting Blessings in a Backpack. So similar to No Kid Hungry, they're feeding kids across the country. Okay, um, I can't promise I would score anything. I would, I would give 100%. I don't know what the results would be, but absolutely, sure. I would like to say it's all about the effort and the having fun, but I would be lying can... because I'm competitive. <laughs> oh, yes, we want to win. We want to win. But uh, that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it should be a good time. We're going to um, get some food service directors from across the country. Um, maybe some athletes, some maybe NBA Hall of Famers out there yes. coaching or playing, and yes. it should be it should be a good time. You know, what? I'll provide snacks and, hey. and hydration. I can Bring the grilled cheese sandwich. I, I'm more than happy to be the first one to ride the bench <laughs> if, if needed. <laughs> no, you're gonna be at the running point. <laughs> oh wow! <laughs> because you okay. said you're fast, right? <laughs> uh, I, I in my head, but I don't know anymore. Yeah, me too. Yeah, I was uh, racing my son the other day, and I used to be fast in high school. I used to play soccer and basketball. Okay. And, like, I'm running, and I'm like, why aren't I going any faster? Like, I feel like I have three more gears left, but I'm stuck in third. It was it was horrible. It was how'd, bad. How'd you feel the next day? I was sore. Yeah. I was very sore. Yeah. yeah it wasn't it's a good humbling. experience. Very humbling. <laughs> and, like, I don't feel like I'm that old. I'm 39. Like, I just, yeah, it's, it, you know, it's, it's mindset. But yeah. I think you start to move a little slower. You get, you know, if you're playing on the ground, you, it takes you a second to get up. Yeah. Like, Man, when did this happen? That's why I got to start playing more golf. Yeah, you know? yes. Okay, we're going to get out there. We will. I would love to. Perfect. Um. All right, so you recently uh, moved up to a new position here at Ford's Garage, right? I did. All right, so yes. tell me about what you did before and what you're doing right now. Yeah, so um, now I'm the uh, vice president of culinary. That's big. Yeah, it's it's, it's great. You know, I'm, I'm very, very grateful and fortunate to be in a company that recognizes talent and hard work and uh, you know, promote from within. I think it's huge and and we do that, so it was really, really nice to to get recognized and to be promoted into this role. Um, so it, we have 24 Ford's garages around the country, primarily in Florida. Okay. What other states are they in besides Florida? Florida, Ohio, Kentucky, Detroit, or Michigan, and then Indiana. We're in Indiana. Noblesville. Okay. Is that near Fort Wayne or no? About two and a half hours. Right okay. to, outside of Indy, okay. Indianapolis, yeah. Uh, does great. One of our busiest locations. So, well, you would think so because they're big uh, motor motor towns. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And they're in a great location. Um, their look is really, really fun. So I think each each location kind of has their own unique look and feel to it, which really adds um, something different to our to our brand. Okay. So so what do you do as a VP of culinary? Yeah. So I, I oversee everything that deals with with culinary and food and in the, the heart of house. Um, so I we do four LTO menus a year, limited time offer menus, and I'm happy to say we're at the point where we are testing a year out, which is huge. When I first started, I had to create an LTO that was about to launch in six weeks. Oh wow, <laughs> that's yeah. crazy! What what was it? Yeah, no pressure. Um, you know, it was something that was kind of halfway done, so I just had to kind of pick it up, kind of brush it off, and and execute it. Um, I mean, I'm even kind of blanking because now I'm the the menu I'm working now is Q1 of 2025. Yeah. Uh, but I, it was like a pimento burger, which I do want to kind of bring that back to evolve it a little bit. Uh, pimento cheese has been that has been hot as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we had some ton, some sort of tuna item on there. I'm blanking on the other ones. Okay. But um. Um, so, so you mentioned that each Ford's garage has kind of a different look. Yes. So my first time coming here was, I think, when this location first opened up. Was that, wow, two, three years ago? Oh, no, longer than that. I oh, man. I want to say it was, let's see, I want to say 2016. Okay. 2017. And I, I walked in and I was like, does Ford own this place? Like, what is going on here? Like, it looks super cool. You got Model T's all over the place, Ford logos everywhere. Yeah. So what's the deal with Ford and the restaurant? Yeah, so the first Ford's Garage opened in Fort Myers, and that was in 2012. And uh, it was, you know, the, the founders were just enthousi- car enthusiasts, and they, uh, Henry Ford would go on vacation there. So, oh, yeah, oh. so they wanted to just really pay honors and name it Ford's Garage. And, and like, you, to your point, all this, all this um, decor we have in there is really like a nod to that. And um, I believe it was either the second or third opening, Ford Motor Company caught wind of it, and they uh, sent their legal team down and said, hey, really cool concept. We love what you're doing, but we also want a piece of the pie. Yeah. So then um, we we became the uh, official licensee of Ford Motor Company. 
I wonder what the uh, first thought that went through their heads was whenever Ford showed up with their legal team. Like, are we in trouble <laughs> or are they happy about this? <laughs> I'm sure scared. Yeah. But um, I think what could have been a tough situation turned pretty positive. Quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently so. I mean, you guys are doing great. Yeah. We're growing fast. You know, like I, I've been here two and a half years and I've uh, seen at least eight openings, which is great. Uh, we have one more this year. Eight next year, and in 2015, hopefully about 12 to 15. Whoa, you guys are blowing up. We are blowing up. That is huge. Yes. Yeah, I think we have such a, just a unique and fun brand. I think nowadays it's really hard to be something for everyone, but we come close to, you know, really checking off those checklists for, for every box. You yeah. Know, the kids love it because there's, there's just a lot to see and do. Mm -hmm. The cars go off every 45 minutes. The parents are happy because the kids are entertained, so they can have somewhat of an uninterrupted conversation. Yeah. And the grandparents love it because of the nostalgia. Yeah. I was, so I was going to say, whenever I brought my kids here, they had a blast. They had yes. a great time. But at the same, same time, I would come here with just my friends and just hang out and have a couple drinks or get a get some appetizer, eat dinner, whatever. That's exactly right. Yeah. You can be totally family-oriented or if it's just a date night or just with your friends hanging out, grab appetizers at the bar. We have that awesome ice rail up there, which is really unique. Ooh, what's that? So it, it's uh, every location has an ice rail on the bar to keep your beverages ice cold. So if you drink fast, great. If you don't, that's okay because it's just gonna stay cold. That's such a uh, a simple concept, but it makes total sense. Like, why don't all bars have that? Uh, I hope they don't. Yeah, well, I hope they don't either. I'm <laughs> glad you guys did it first. But I'm just saying, like, that's genius. Yeah, and I think that really just is kudos to our founders who really thought of every single detail. Yeah. Um, you know, I know this is odd to say, but our bathrooms are really unique. Um, when you go in there, our, our, our sinks are actually tires, which is really cool. Um, no, I got to go check out the bathroom. <laughs> yes. And then on your way out the door on the men, it will say women. And then on the women, it will say men. So you kind of like, wait, I go to the right one. <laughs> kind of like, you know, makes you second gang think, but it's, uh, it's, it's just fun. That's what this, I think this brand is. Yeah. A lot of fun. So. If we're talking about trends and recipes, yeah. what do you what do you see trending now? Um, I do think that you know, stepping out and going into these different cultures are becoming really popular and in, in kind of blending it. So for me, that's what I'm doing, trying to you know, it was a, this birria tacos, but blending it into a grilled cheese, which is very American, right? And how can I evolve that into our our four walls where it's um, it's flavorful? It's it's easy on operations, and then our guests, it's craveable for our guests. It's creating that new news. Yeah. So I think I think um, Indian food has becoming hot. I still think there is somewhat of a plant based out there, but mm -hmm. just I think more towards um, knowledge around just vegetables and vegetable cookery. I think is interesting. I think fried chicken is still super popular. Yeah. What else can we do with fried chicken? Um, and just sandwiches in general. Are you doing a lot with plant based right now? We're not, well, but it, even personally, yeah, it, yes, it is an area I want to kind of dive more into. Mm -hmm. um, I I I like to just work with vegetables as a base and kind of incorporate it from there. I think cauliflower is still really fun to to use as a foundation because it can it could hold up to different sauces of different flavor profiles. Um, <clears throat> Brussels sprouts are still pretty trendy and hot. I, I had that with hot honey. That was so good. Like Ooh. hot honey and bacon, great combination. Anything with bacon. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. How do you feel about like meat alternates? Um, I think I think they had their purpose. When I first started here, we were using the, the beyond the possible. Mm -hmm. uh, for me, I just prefer to go more of the, the vegetable route and yeah. kind of keeping it like whole food. So, yep. so that kind of vibe, that, that's my preference. Mm -hmm. um, so... I'm assuming that you're the one that's coming up with all these new uh, menu ideas and concepts, right? So is there something that you do to kind of stay on top of things? Like, are you traveling the world, eating food as you go? Like, how do you how do you stay up on I would, times? I would love to be traveling the world. <laughs> oh, hey. I, 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 no. Me too. Um, yeah, when I do travel, you know, I'm, I'm definitely looking at local menus, definitely trying everything. Um, I, I follow probably the, the top players out there, seeing what they're doing on their menus, what kind of flavor profiles they're doing, what are they mixing, what um, what's working well. Um, <clears throat> just doing my research, and then I think what's what's been really helpful for us in our in our innovation process is creating these themes mm -hmm. around our LTO windows. Mm -hmm. 
So for me, it kind of gives me guardrails. Instead of just being out here, I'm a little bit more focused so that I can, um, you know, the innovation process is, goes a little smoother. Okay. And then what's fun is that, you know, the process is um, I'll, I'll do paper concepts. So I'll have maybe 20 ideas down. And they're like, and then maybe five or, or half will go to the actual tasting. But I'll still keep those other 10 as my, 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 my pipeline. Yeah. And kind of tweak those and then use that for the next menu. Okay. So that's that's one bucket. And then also, on the other hand, I do rely on our, our vendor partners a lot as well. A lot of them will put on ideation sessions for us. And I find that crucial. You know, I think when I was younger, I wanted to do everything. I wanted to have a lot of control. Like, I wanted to always be my idea or my, my creation. But... The older I got, it, it's it's okay to ask for help and to use your resources. You know, two two minds are more powerful than one. Yeah. So speaking of asking for help, do you have any mentors that kind of got you into the role that you're in right now, even as a young adult? Yeah, I think when I first started, you know, I was fortunate to work with a chef that would also had gone to the CIA, so he knew what I needed to do or how to get me ready to attend that school. Um, so, and I had no experience. I l- didn't have a knife. I didn't know what I was doing. So he like literally showed me how to cut, how to hold a knife, how to everything. I'm so lost. Uh, so he, you know, he was definitely the foundation. And then from there, uh, I had, I worked with a great chef in Indianapolis who I think that was like the first time that I learned what it means it's a partnership to be executive chef and a sous chef working together oh. on the same mission, kitchen, trying to get everyone else on board in the kitchen. Um, <clears throat> so that's where I learned the leadership role. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, my previous role here, I was with Blooming Brands. I was there for about five and a half years, and I had a tremendous mentor there that really took me under his wing and just we would meet we called it our weekly coffee coffee breaks Mm -hmm. so we'd literally just meet for about half an hour an hour depending on our schedule in the day we'd probably spend the first half okay like what's going on this week what we're doing and then the second half would just literally be about food what did you eat yesterday or what did you eat this past weekend and we would just deep dive into that that's great so he was he was definitely a big mentor for me yeah it's so important to have mentors it is i think it is i think you know this this business can be really, really challenging and and, and hard. You know, I think it, work-life balance can be very, very challenging. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, re- our restaurants are open every day. So um, those mentors add a lot of support. Yeah, absolutely. You mentioned um, culinary knife skills and all that stuff. So I actually, <laughs> I was at an event at the CIA in Texas. Was that San Antonio? Yes. In San Antonio, yeah. Um, it was thrown by the National Peanut Board. And one of the chefs gave us a, a knife training demonstration and was in some educational tips also on how to cut. And it was crazy. Like, I had no <laughs> idea that chopping up vegetables was such an art style. Yes, it is. I mean, that's that was one of the first classes when you learn. You, you spend um, <clears throat> three weeks in that class, and the first of it is literally going through every single knife cut there is. And you have like your little tray, and then you go up, and the chef will grade you. Yeah, it was wild. It was <laughs> it wild. It is, it is. But it, it, you know, it's um, it's teaching you discipline. Mm-hmm. Same and it's too. teaching you the the foundation. Yeah. So, what would you say to someone who is looking to learn or wants to become a chef? I would say just be a sponge. You know, learn as much as you can. I think uh, sometimes people are hesitant for job jumping, mm. but I did it a lot when I was young because I really wanted to get exposure and experience in all different facets of the business. You know, I've been in country clubs. I've been in fine dining, um, farm and table, baking. I worked on a, a organic dairy farm where the products they made on that farm we utilize on the menu. And I worked from, from to, and then from there, went downtown for a more high volume. So just get out there, be a sponge, put yourself out there and learn as much as you can. Um, you have to shut corn before you lead a kitchen. That's true. That's very true. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with me today and sharing some of your insights. Um, people want to get a hold of Ford's Garage or you, or how can they do that? Yeah, it, just go to our website. The contact information is there. And um, thank you, Marlon. This has been fantastic. I've had a lot of fun. I have to say, from the minute or from the minute JTM told me that you were in Tampa, I was like, oh my gosh, I got to get in the podcast <laughs> with Jessica. Make yeah, it happen. <laughs> this is so much fun. Thank you for reaching out. I can't wait to go, go play golf. Let's do it. All right. <laughs> All right. See you in the course. All right. <laughs>